Hello, do you feel like you might be the scapegoat in your family and it's causing you a lot of stress and anxiety? In this video, I'm going to help you identify if you're, you are the scapegoat, what a scapegoat is and what you can do to make life better for yourself. When a person is a scapegoat in the family, they're often blamed for the problems that happen in the family. So it may be a problem that is, is overall through the family, but it comes back down to the person who is the scapegoat and it seems to be their fault. Or it may be that there are other things that go on with family members, but it gets deflected away from that and somehow or other just comes back to you as the scapegoat again. It may be that there's labels going on in the family. So it could be that maybe you've always been known as the problem child or the one who causes problems or, you, you know, you, you've grown up now, but you're still seen as the problem child or the problem one, or maybe even called the, the black sheep. You might find that you often feel quite isolated because it, it feels like it's sort of them against you and there's a sense of you being distance and not connected. Maybe sometimes you do connect for a little while, but then it just seems to come back on you again that you're, you've done something wrong. You might feel painted into a corner, a sense of, well, no matter what I do, I can't get things right because people are always just see me in this light. They see me in this way. And actually you feel kind of gaslighted because if you try to talk about how you feel, your feelings are shut down or the reality that you experience is not accepted by other people. They just want to see things from their reality. They won't listen to your reality. And so you're kind of told in so many words that what you feel isn't valid. All of those are indicators of being the black sheep in the family, the scapegoat the person, the problem person person who's known as the scapegoat or treated as a scapegoat and actually being the scapegoat of the family can create a lot of anxiety for people it can cause depression it can also you know cause low self-esteem can cause you to feel kind of trapped as I say sort of painted into a corner because no matter what you do you can't get things right so you're in this constant state of of, of anxiety and worry and stress and, and not knowing what to do or how to be. And also it can affect your other relationships, particularly romantic relationships or close relationships with people, because you'll have a level of kind of mistrust because you're never quite sure if you're going to be blamed or accused for, about something for something. So if you're feeling that way and the things that I've described here resonate for you it's likely that you are a scapegoat in your family let's just for a minute before we go on to look at what you can do about that is let's just look at the difference between victim consciousness and being a scapegoat victim consciousness is when a person sees themselves as a victim and they see the world is against them and they're always, you know, having some problem or some issue. They, they're quite negative. They feel disempowered and they feel that everybody's out to get them. And, you know, that they're, that they're the ones who are always sort of in trouble and, and have to suffer. Being a scapegoat is not victim consciousness, but being a scapegoat can sort of nudge you into feeling like a victim. So there's a little bit of an overlap there, but it's very important that if you're being told, oh, you're acting like a victim, to get very clear on that in your mind, get very clear and think, am I, am I just sort of feeling like a victim or am I being made to feel that I am to blame for things, which is something different? Thinking about being a scapegoat, we quite often feel that it's them and us. So it feels like those people in my family are over there and I'm over here and they're kind of against me. But actually, if we can view it in a slightly different way, it can be very helpful. And that way is to see it as a kind of a dance where you're all together in this dance. 
And if one person changes, imagine you were doing a dance as a group of people all together in sync. And if one person changes or well, the other people, they can't carry on with the same steps, can they? So actually, if you can do some things to step out of that dance, then you will automatically help yourself and you'll help to shift things. One really helpful way to understand that is what we call a drama triangle. And I do have a video coming out soon that's all about drama triangles. I'll link to that as well so that you can really dig into that and, and have a, a learn about it. But I'll tell you about a drama triangle here as well. So a drama triangle is a triangle with three points and each of those points rec represents a role that somebody takes on. When we say three points and three roles, it indicates there's three people, but not necessarily. Sometimes it can be three people. Sometimes it can be a group of people. Sometimes it can even be two people. It's about the roles that people take on and how they can change back and forth between those roles. In the drama triangle, we see these three roles being played out. And the three roles are persecutor, victim, and rescuer. So the persecutor role is when somebody is doing something to judge or criticize or put down somebody, perhaps bullying them or doing something controlling or something, not, not good stuff, negative, negative behavior. The victim is the person who is in that role at that particular point in time to be in that victim role, feeling persecuted by the other person. And then the rescuer, of course, is the person who's gone into that role of being asked to rescue them for the victim to say, please rescue me. Um, it could be, you know, mum, dad's being mean to me or dad, my brother's having a go at me, or, you know, my sister, auntie's having a go at me. It could be different people, but taking on that role of, I'm a victim, will you rescue me? This person's persecuting me. Sometimes the rescuer role is something that we do when we're people pleasing and we automatically jump in and we want to rescue somebody. So when we think about the drama triangle and we think about those roles, persecutor, victim, and rescuer, you might recognize that that actually plays out a little bit if in your family, if you're the scapegoat, because quite often you're put into the victim role by a persecutor or persecutors, people in the family who are in the persecutor role. And that's why I say there can be an overlap with victim consciousness because you're sort of pushed and nudged into that victim place. It's not quite the same as you deciding you're a victim. It's more about other people putting you into that victim place. And you may be beginning to take that on a bit, which is the overlap. But then you see the way these roles work is that you may at times connect with one or two of your family members and, and kind of get a little bit of rescuing from them and ask them for a bit of rescuing but it may not last for very long because then the rescuer is seen as a persecutor by the other people in the family because they've sided with you instead of siding with them. And then if you get a little bit confrontation or a little bit upset or a little bit cross and say, you know, you're blaming me for everything. I don't like this behavior. Guess what? you become the persecutor in their eyes. And then they look to each other to rescue each other. And so it goes round and round and round. So understanding these roles can be really, really helpful in stepping away from the scapegoat place in your family, getting out of that dance. Because once you recognize that there's victim, persecutor and rescuing going on, you can choose not to participate in that. You can recognize when people are maybe rescuing each other, maybe rescuing you a bit. You don't want to be rescued. You want to be an empowered person. 
individual in your own way, not wanting to have one member of the family or another member of the family, sometimes being a bit kinder, sometimes being on your side, sometimes not. You don't want to get involved with people who are in persecutor role, who are persecuting you. That's not anything to, to, to be involved with because actually what they're really doing is deflecting their own pain and their own issues and their own problems onto you. It's easier to put you in that victim role or to put you into that scapegoat role than it is to look at their own problems. So if they're being a persecutor, that's what that's about. So you don't, want, you don't need to even get involved in that at all. That's their business, it's their stuff, their problems. And again, if you're feeling in that victim, victim-like way, it's about the dance that's been happening that has nudged you into that feeling of being a victim. But you don't have to be a victim if you don't want to. One way out of this is to recognize when you're feeling in that victim role, if you're feeling that family members are blaming you and judging you and painting you in a bad line, you're feeling stuck and is to say, I'm not a victim, but I do feel vulnerable. And it's perfectly normal and okay and human to acknowledge that you do feel vulnerable. It's different from being a victim. Being a victim means that somebody put you somewhere, you're stuck, nothing can change. Being vulnerable is saying, yeah, I'm a bit raw and a bit kind of fragile and I'm a bit vulnerable. So what do I need to help myself feel better? Not what do I need other people to stop victimizing me, but because I'm vulnerable, what do I need to do for myself to help me to feel more empowered, less vulnerable, stronger? What can you do for you to help you with that? It may be that you need to step away from the family members who are putting you into this sort of victim situation. Step away from this being the scapegoat and actually start focusing on spending much more time away from, from that environment, that energy. But it's also about saying, well, Okay, I can step away from that. But what do I also need to do for me to help myself feel less vulnerable, less wobbly, less fragile? What, what self-love can I give to me? And that can be all sorts of things. It could be practical things, looking after yourself, your health, your diet, your exercise, pampering yourself. But also a big part of it is how you're talking to yourself. Notice how you are talking to yourself. Are you saying kind things to yourself or have you incorporated those family members' voices into your head? And are you repeating things in your head that they that they say about you? Or are you, are you trying to resist what they've said? Are you having conversations in your head saying they've accused me of this and I haven't done that? And, and getting into that energy space of being defensive. How about changing that to giving yourself loving, kind thoughts you're doing great you're wonderful see what you achieved see how kind you are see what empathy you have see what a lovely person you are see all the good things about yourself see how compassionate you are all of those wonderful things that you can say to yourself and soothe yourself it's all right it's okay you feel vulnerable i get it it's fine you'll be okay life can go on Lots and lots of things. Talk to that inner child, that child within you, who maybe started this journey of being the scapegoat a very long time ago and needs that soothing. So talk to yourself, that child within you. Lots of love, lots of nurturing, and just not concerning yourself with the other family members and the dance and the game of victim, persecutor, rescuer that they're doing all the time don't just step away from the dance just focus on yourself and understand that it's okay to be vulnerable the other thing you can do is really focus on any other relationships you have in your life that are healthy really really enjoy those relationships think about the positives of those relationships think about 
the trust you have in those relationships, the connection you have in those relationships, small things. It could be small things like that person doesn't put you down. That's quite a big thing, I guess. But, you know, having thoughts about that rather than thinking about, you know, can I trust this person? Notice all the good things that have happened in your friendship or your partner or your work colleagues or even acquaintances, all the positive interactions that you have. Focus on those because really being the scapegoat is really about stepping away from that dance, stepping away from that role. You're never going to be able to wave a magic wand and change those family members and make them behave differently towards you unless you step away from the game, step away from the dance. I can't say it enough in this video. Step away from that interaction, a dynamic, as we call it in psychology, which is a kind of the energy and the interactions that goes on between people. Step out of that. When you do that, those family members, well, what can they do? They have to reform the dance. It may be that they'll reform that dance amongst themselves and you will be disconnected from them. You may not be able to get back into a close connected or ever, if you've ever been in a close connected relationship with them. Or it may be that they'll kind of have a reshuffle because you're not there to blame anymore. You're, the black sheep's gone bad, <laughs> disappeared out of the field. There's nobody there for them to, to judge and criticise anymore. So they will have to reform the dance that they do with each other and for themselves. There's nowhere for them to deflect their pain and their responsibility and their difficulties and their challenges. They have to take a look at themselves and make some changes, in which case you might be able to then have a better relationship with them in the future. Or it may be that they'll continue the same old dance amongst each other, but you won't be part of that dance anymore. So if you feel that you are the scapegoat in your family, I do hope that this video is helpful. I'd love it if you'd leave your comments below and tell me, share your story. It will help other people as well. Do hit the thumbs up like button. That way more people get to watch this video. They get to see it, they get to watch it. And so you're helping me to help them. Don't forget to hit subscribe and no the notifications and you'll know when my other videos are coming out. And thank you very much for showing up for you today. Thank you for watching this video all the way through for showing up for you and for thinking about making positive changes in your life. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.